CT Physics and Imaging, a Guide for Technologists, Chapter 2, Radiographic Physics, the X-ray source. To the surprise of some PAs and NPs, a CT scan does use X-radiation. No magnets or death rays, but definitely a lot of X-rays. In fact, CT scanners use an X-ray tube that is nearly identical to those used in general radiography and fluoroscopy. The requirements of X-ray production in an X-ray tube are the same in all circumstances. For all X-ray tube types, three conditions are required. A source of electrons, a means of rapid acceleration of electrons, that's energizing the electrons, and a means of rapid deceleration of electrons, releasing electron energy. All three conditions of X-ray production take place in a controlled fashion inside the X-ray tube. The cathode filament serves as the source of electrons. The rotating anode is the target of the electron stream. Accelerated electrons collide with the tungsten target and release their energy as heat and X-rays. The entire X-ray assembly is encased in a vacuum-sealed envelope to maintain high-efficiency X-ray production. Figure 2.1 A general-purpose X-ray tube. The stream of electrons flows from the cathode filament to the rotating anode disc, also called the target. How are CT X-ray tubes different? Many CT procedures require a continuous X-ray exposure of several seconds at a time, which results in a significant amount of heat production in the X-ray tube. CT tubes accommodate this additional heat with thicker anodes, faster rotation, and unique tungsten alloys with higher heat capacity and faster cooling rates. The X-ray beam. The X-ray photons produced during a CT scan can be defined in terms of both energy and intensity, both of which have a meaningful effect on the patient dose and image quality. Intensity specifically refers to the number of photons in the X-ray beam. This is also called the photon quantity. The number of photons in the beam is proportional to the radiation dose to the patient and the exposure of the detectors. If beam intensity doubles, the patient dose doubles and the exposure to the detectors also doubles. Energy refers to the energy of the X-ray photons in the beam. This is also called beam quality, hardness, or penetrability. Photon energy is related to the penetrability of the X-ray beam. Higher energy photons travel further in matter and are able to pass through denser materials. The X-ray beam is polychromatic or polyenergetic, meaning it is composed of photons with different energies. The average energy of photons in the X-ray beam is represented in units of kiloelectron volts. That's KeV. X-ray exposure factors. The energy and intensity of the X-ray beam are controlled by the technologist setting three prime exposure factors, just like general radiography. Milliamperage, or MA, the rotation time in seconds, and kilovoltage peak, which is the KVP. Milliamperage. Milliamperage, or MA, is a measurement for tube current, a setting which controls the number of electrons flowing through the X-ray tube per second. Changes in MA have important effects on the X-ray beam intensity, patient dose, and detector exposure. For example, if MA is doubled, the intensity or quantity of the X-ray beam also doubles. The patient dose doubles and exposure to the detectors doubles. If MA is decreased by 50%, the intensity of the X-ray beam decreases by 50%, patient dose decreases by 50%, and exposure to the detectors decreases by 50%. Some CT imaging procedures use a fixed MA for the entire length of the scan. For CT of the chest, this means the same MA would be used from the shoulders all the way through the lungs. A preferred approach is to vary the MA based on the thickness or density of the anatomic section being scanned. For example, a scan of the chest would use a lower MA through the lung fields, but a higher MA through the shoulders and the upper abdomen. This is called automatic dose modulation. Figure 2.2. This is the lateral localizer image the technologist uses to set the boundaries of an abdominal pelvic scan. 
The image is overlaid with a dotted line with the MA settings that will be used during the scan. The MA is lowest through the lung fields and highest in the central abdomen and bony pelvis. These changes correspond with the anatomic denseness of the patient's anatomy. Rotation time. Unlike general radiography, the technologist does not set the total exposure time, but instead sets the rotation time. Rotation time is the total time for one full cycle of the x-ray tube around the patient, which is generally between 0.1 and 1.0 seconds. Rotation time influences beam intensity, patient dose, and detector exposure. For example, if the rotation time is decreased, the dose to the patient and the exposure to the detectors will decrease by the same fraction. If the rotation time is increased, the dose to the patient and the exposure to the detectors will decrease by the same fraction. Figure 2.3, a diagram of the x-ray tube and detectors spiraling around the patient. The time required for one full rotation of the tube around the patient is called the rotation time. Milliampere seconds, or mass. Rotation time, together with exposure MA, controls the total output of the tube during each rotation. This combined factor is called the milliampere seconds, or mass. Mass equals the MA multiplied by the exposure time in seconds. Mass influences the intensity of the X-ray beam. There is a reciprocal relationship between MA and time. If rotation time is reduced by half, the MA must be doubled to retain the same total photon intensity. This also means that multiple MA and rotation time settings result in the same total mass. For example, 50 MA times 0.6 seconds equals 30 mass per rotation. 100 MA times 0.3 seconds also equals 30 mass per rotation and 200 MA times 0.15 seconds also equals 30 mass per rotation. It's important for technologists to understand this reciprocal relationship between MA and rotation time. Consider this case study. A CT of the head without contrast is requested on an infant. The infant is non-compliant, as expected, and the first scan is completely non-diagnostic due to motion artifact. Motion artifact can be reduced by faster rotation times. If the rotation time is reduced from 1 second to 0.5 seconds, how should the MA be adjusted? Here's the solution. This case of a wiggling infant is actually a very common problem. It's also a very predictable problem. In a real life scenario, a good technologist would have recognized the potential for motion artifact and made technical adjustments on the first attempt. The solution to this case study is simple. Rotation time was reduced by a factor of two. Therefore, MA must be increased by a factor of two to maintain the same total intensity, or the same total mass. In other words, the new MA should be double the initial MA. Kilovoltage peak. Kilovoltage peak, or KVP, is the voltage of the x-ray tube. The KVP causes the electrons at the cathode to accelerate rapidly to the anode. The KVP, or tube potential, controls the energy of the X-ray beam. Changes in the KVP have important consequences. Increased KVP results in higher energy photons, that's the beam quality, and more total photons in the X-ray beam, that's the beam quantity. Increased KVP results in a more intense beam, more dose to the patient, and more photons to the detectors. Increased KVP results in a higher percentage of photons penetrating through the patient and reaching the image receptor. Increased KVP results in more even penetration of the patient and loss of image contrast. Obviously, the reverse is also true. Decreased KVP results in lower energy photons, fewer total photons, less penetration of the patient, lower dose, and less exposure to the detectors. As with general radiography, KVP should be increased with increasing part thickness and part density. Case study, infection and edema. 
A CT of the lower leg is requested on a patient with an infected wound and significant edema or swelling. The leg is swollen to two to three times the normal size. How, if at all, should the exposure factors of the scan be adjusted? Here's the solution. Just like general radiography, more tissue requires more radiation to get quality images. Since this is a case of excess fluid in the leg, swelling, more MA would be appropriate. If the scanner is set to use a variable MA, see figure 2.2, the scanner would actually make the adjustments for you. An alternative would be to increase the KVP. Filtration. A CT scanner includes filters. Aluminum filtration removes mostly low energy photons from the x-ray beam that would otherwise add to the patient dose without contributing much information to the final image. Filtration has the effect of decreasing the beam intensity while increasing the average beam energy. CT scanners use a special bow tie filter that shapes the intensity of the x-ray beam to match the shape of the patient. Specifically, the bow tie filter reduces the intensity of the beam on the outer edges of the patient where less radiation is needed. Figure 2.4. The bow tie filter shapes the intensity of the beam to match the profile of the patient. The outer edges of the filter are thicker, which creates a beam with lower intensity on the outer edges. This corresponds to the outer edges of the patient where the beam has the least amount of tissue to penetrate. Warm-up procedure. A CT scan creates significant heat in the anode, which can be damaging to the anode if not already warm. If the temperature of the anode rises too rapidly, the anode disc may crack, become unstable in rotation, and ultimately render the entire tube useless. This situation may be prevented by proper warm-up procedures. Generally, most manufacturers will provide their own machine-specific warm-up recommendations. This procedure involves using a low MA, low KVP technique to slowly increase the anode temperature prior to high output scanning.